We got John McMullen, Jerry McDonald, your Mac and Mac Birds 365. Guys, we've got our weekly Wednesday spot with our pal Mike Gill from Down the Shore, 97.3 ESPN Radio, the host of the Sports Bash, which uh, he sucks in John McMullen to come on his show all the time to uh, share the same things that he shares here on Birds 365, but most of the times we get them first. Depends on when news breaks. Uh, breaking news today, Mikey, is going to be... Eagles schedule, Mrs. Kelsey leaked a potential game yesterday that the Chiefs and the Eagles are going to play number two. Anything else going to get out ahead of tomorrow night's official complete release of the schedule? Well, I did read something yesterday that they're scheduled to be one of the teams to play on Christmas in that triple header. Uh, They're doing a Monday, Christmas Day triple header this year. So I would imagine this will be or, the last. Or NBA, by the way. Used to be their day. That's well, I was just going to say, I would imagine this is the last year for a little while. I don't know. Would the NFL put games on Christmas on a Tuesday or a Wednesday no. just to do Christmas? Or will this be the last, you know, Christmas scheduling for the NFL until it kind of cycles its way back to at least, you know, Thursday or Friday? So. Amazon's going to release their game. Have they done that yet? Because there's a lot of speculation. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, All John right. said it's going to be done via delivery to everyone's house. There's not actually <laughs> going to be an announcement. I just saw the truck. The I just saw the, the little truck driving down my yeah, street. I, I might it. have it on not, my front Not door. little. Yeah. Oh, Amazon doesn't have little trucks. They got well, big we're down the shore, Jody. Ours are a little smaller. Down the shore, the truck's a little smaller down oh, here. Really? Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, the Amazon game, there's been some speculation that they might be the Black Friday game this year. Uh, that was a Peter King uh, in his Monday morning quarterback, and that's a pretty good uh, source there. And then obviously um, this Christmas thing, which they're going to do three games. It's going to be a Monday. Last year, the Eagles played on Christmas Eve. The Sixers played on Christmas Day. This year, you might get the Sixers and the Eagles on Christmas Day. And uh, I would imagine, um, you know, if they can get the Eagles on Christmas Day. I was just listening to uh, the uh, Marshan part podcast, and they were talking Andrew about how the, yeah. Yeah, the executives are going over the schedule, and they weren't sure it was going to be ready in time. And one of the things is Fox is now – it's not the NFC on Fox and the no. AFC on CBS. There's some packages, but they still get – like the Cowboys on Fox a certain amount of times per their contract. The Chiefs are the main draw for CBS, but they said the next tier team is Philadelphia. That's who the the executives are fighting Ooh. for the most after Dallas right now is, is would be Philadelphia. Because keep in mind, Green Bay doesn't have Rodgers anymore, so they yeah. kind of they lose their national appeal to some extent. Uh, they did mention Pittsburgh is a draw still for the AFC side, but the Eagles are, you know, that 425 Fox game, they're still going to be a big pick for Fox there. You would imagine they're going to get six primetime games. Now, does Christmas um, Thursday, do they count in the prime? Yeah, we, were, we were talking about that uh, because technically the Amazon game shouldn't be primetime, but it's standalone. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Jody, I, what there's going to be three Monday night uh, sort of double headers, triple header you mentioned yeah. there, um, and they're going to be staggered. So do they count? I'm not sure how they count those six games, but however they count them, Mike, I think they'll hold one or two back because you want to be able to flex uh, for the good teams. You want to be able to flex them in to a to a prime time game late in the season. So yeah, I'm not Monday sure night- there's going to be. Monday night, you can flex now from week 12 to week 17. So you have the Monday night flex is in play this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nightmare. uh, That schedule. Uh, Well, I, I mean, these places that, that sell trips, I mean, you're going to be having some problems if you're, you know, Hey, we have a trip scheduled for the Eagles to play, you know, whoever on a Sunday afternoon and that game gets flexed to Monday night. I mean, you pay yeah. for that trip in advance. I mean, you know, we, we all know these uh, outlets that are out there, Philly sports trips and green, you know, they all have these things where you go on in April to pay for that trip. And if you get that thing moved, 
it's going to be a nightmare. Um, but hey, yeah. the NFL, they don't care as much about the fans in attendance as they do the fans who are watching no, television. Not even close. And it's no, because but, of the, the TV pays the bills. I, yeah. I did the math, by the way, Jody. 62% of the NFL's revenue comes from TV rights fees. Yeah, 62%. Not, not surprised. If so, anything, I'd say, if I'm surprised, if you said, did you think it would be more or less, I would actually said more. I would yeah. have thought that it was Well, I guess the, the, the big question is, is that a sustainable business model with the, the, with the way yeah, television is we were talking going? about that earlier this week. You right, and I, I mean, talked about that a lot. Um, it, and here's the thing people don't understand. Of that 62%, the other revenue is, is fueled by the TV. If you take away the television aspect, you're not selling merchandise, you're not selling tickets, you're not selling out. People don't realize how powerful the television executives are in professional sports. It's not Roger Goodell. I say it all the time. It's not Adam Silver. The most powerful people in sports are the TV executives that, signing these you know, checks. I don't know... Um... So David Sampson, who was the president of the Marlins, he has a podcast. Um, I had him on my show last week because I wanted to try to get a president of a team's perspective on how they view things. And he talked about how in baseball, a lot of these rule changes came because the executives of the television executives wanted the game to be faster. Yeah. It's not that baseball said, we have a problem here. <laughs> no, the TV executives said, your problem is your game's on my screen too long. Move it along. So hence the pitch clock was formed uh, because the TV executives wanted to get the game pace moving faster. Yeah, the tail does wag the dog in a lot of uh, uh, broadcast uh, respects in more sports than just football. But I will say this, and I think John disagreed with me, so we're not going to agree on this today. Um, John Mara, the owner of the Giants, I think is actually – a really good owner if you're a New York Giant fan. He doesn't always hire the right coach. He doesn't always hire the right GM. I'm not saying he's infallible by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he really does care about the Giants and he Giants fans. And he was as outspoken, if not the most outspoken, for the we're not giving flex capability to Amazon because I'm not going to do that to my fans. I'm not going to let my fans just get screwed because Amazon jumps in and says, oh, we got to have this game. And my fans are planning to go on a trip. With a I really do believe that when he said that. I, I, I have a, a specific amount of respect for John Mara because of that. And mark my words, at some point, now this was in advance. This was speculation that Amazon could get the flex. At some point, there's going to be an owner who says ESPN. Because ESPN is going to flex out of their game. And they're going to do it twice. And NBC is going to flex out of their game. And I'm sorry if if it keeps happening to you, you're the laughing stock of the NFL. If you're scheduled for a Sunday night game and you're so lousy that teams want out of broadcasting you, broadcast outlets don't want any part of you, yeah, you're getting spit in the face. And they're, they're, there's going to be an owner who's going to stand up and go, hey, I'm bigger than the exec at Amazon. I'm sorry. Screw him. He's not uh, rescheduling my game. We've given don't, away don't, too much of the power. Don't say screw Jeff Bezos. You're liable to end up in a ditch. <laughs> Jeff, well, Jeff the question does. on that, Jody, you know, as you double bird me, I thought um, you gave <laughs> that, was, that was uh, John Mara for ESPN. Yeah. Sorry, the old ESPN. stone cold double bird. Um, can you have a multiple flex in the same weekend? You know, could Sunday night football flex out of their game and Monday night football flex out of their game? Oh, that's and now what you have... it's scheduled as of right now. Right. But NBC's got, got flex right up to the, the end of the season. Right, that's what I'm saying. So, like week thirteen, you know, they've got the Bills and Cleveland, and you know, Deshaun Watson's hurt, and they're three and ten, and the Bills are, you know, struggling along because someone got hurt there, and they're seven and five, and they don't want that game anymore. They get rid of that game, bring in another game, and then Monday Night Football has a similar situations with you know Pittsburgh playing the Chargers, and they're like, well, we don't want this game either. 
you know, there's only so many games that have compelling matchups at that stage of the season, you know, sometimes because it's there's so much parity. Everybody's seven and four. Everybody's nine and eight. Everybody's eight and six. You know, it's it's a lot of like that. So it's going to be interesting to see. And I'll, I'll say this to Jody's point, um, you know, I agree it, with Jody at some point, though, somebody's going to get. Hey, this is ridiculous because the fans are going to the fans are going to at some point you're going to get that game where there's a, a big market team and the, 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 the fans travel well and then they get moved. And it might be the Eagles whose hotel things are booked and you get these people riled up to said, you know, I spent my paycheck on this game. You there's a lot certain of people- teams, I'll say there's certain teams, the Eagles among them. They're not going to move for that reason. They're relevant. Or even if they're having well, a little no, bit right. of a dism, Dallas would. Be well, I will say this, team. John. I would say this. They might move the Eagles from an afternoon game to a night game, where oh, they're sure. a one o'clock sure. Sunday game, and they get, hey, we want Eagles on Monday Night Football, and you have to go from a Sunday one to a to oh, a. Oh yeah, prime that's game. more likely that way. But to Jody's point, here's what I'll say: if if some owner is going to be upset down the road about being moved because, you know, they become a laughing stock. I think that takes care of yourself. If you're getting moved, you're already a laughing stock because that means your team is awful. That means your team is awful. They're not moving them if the team is relevant. So yeah, I don't, I don't, right. I don't, I don't John, think- John, isn't it an additional spit in the face? Anybody can look up the standings. And if you're three and 10, you're three and 10. And there's no way around that. And you've reached laughing stock status. But if in addition to that, a network stands up and goes, yeah, yeah, yeah you go back and play it Monday. At yeah, but I, I I, would, playing devil's advocate, I would say, you know, because some of these owners, let's be honest, there's owners and Philadelphia fans are lucky enough to have a, a very good owner who try to win. And there are other owners that it's not as important. And maybe that makes yeah, them on to be a Doesn't Jerry stuff. Jones try to win every single oh, year? Sure. When was the last time he won? Yeah, but Dallas is not in this conversation because you can make a case that if you're three and ten, that you don't want to be on prime time because you want to lower your level of of visibility because you're already a laughing stock. That's my point. But Jerry's yeah, Jerry tries to win. Jerry hasn't won. That's a different discussion. But Dallas is relevant, and that'll piss Eagles fans off. But Mike's right. Dallas is number one. Dallas is number one over Philadelphia. Dallas is number one over Kansas City. You can argue it, it shouldn't be that way. You can argue to the hills come home. It is that way. I can't even explain why it is that way. But it's so ingrained in America as a society. The Cowboys are the Cowboys. I'm sorry. They are. There are certain teams, the New York Yankees, well, the Los Angeles Lakers. It shows the us Cowboys one thing. are that team in the NFL. I'm this sorry. shows us one thing that branding works. So if you want to advertise, that would be a example one A of why branding works. The Cowboys haven't been relevant in many people's lifetime, and yet they are the number one draw on television because people are basically sheep. Mm, yeah, uh, I agree they're, with that. They're irrelevant when it comes to championship runs but they're absolutely relevant when it comes to interest and being able to move because of the branding they've been branded as such of this is america's team and that's the branding aspect that you're right jody but that's what i'm talking about they haven't been relevant in terms of championships they haven't won a title since 95 they haven't been to a a, a, a nfc championship game in in most i i used to you know i do the show with a guy who was you know a couple guys younger than me in their 30s and the, the comment they make is, is or I'm 46, okay? The guys in their 30s have never seen, never. You're 30 years old. You've never seen a championship-level NFC championship game Cowboys team. Think about that. Never. If you're in your 30s, you've never seen them make that game. Very yeah. true. Uh, but they are, uh, and again, uh, we're getting into semantical debate here. There are some owners, Jerry Jones not being one of them, that was, as John pointed out, take that relevance. As long as I'm making money, as long as I'm uh, being profitable, yeah, why do I want to need that? Why do I have to go to the Super Bowl? I got to pay for everybody to get out there to the Super Bowl? Just tell me what the bottom line is doing these days. There are some owners like that, that, but I think there are many more owners that are driven to be good and put the 
uh, needs of their fans out there above and beyond. They, 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 there's a couple in every group uh, that are both good and bad in that way. All right, so Eagles schedule. Uh, we're five prime time games. Don't know when exactly they're going to fall and the like. They are the defending champions of the NFC. Will the schedule makers in any way give deference to the Eagles? Is it all decided by branding, Mike? Who brands the best and that's how we're going to lay out the schedule? Or do they actually look at, yeah, this is a really good team that we should be showing respect to by how we schedule them? Well, you know, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of the executives, Dallas is the first draw. Philadelphia, Kansas City on the AFC side. Philadelphia is that next tier. So, yes, you're going to get, you know, I think – we laugh all the time. When <laughs> I love John's Twitter responses now. Somebody gets released, no. <laughs> you know, anybody who has a mediocre level name that any Eagles fan has recognized, when he gets released from a team, John's first answer is no. Because the Eagles fans – I put a gotta, hashtag on it, too. We got to go get that guy. You know, I've heard of him. I've actually heard of this guy. Let's go get him. Uh, the Eagles are a team that the executives know have a very passionate fan base. So they're going to get the deference of – we want you in our best games. Now, I think a lot of Eagles fans, I, I'm just spitballing here, like the Sunday 1 o'clock game. I would imagine don't get prepared for too many Sunday 1 o'clock games this year. I think crushing, you're going to be looking at – Crushing me, Mike. Crushing six, me. You're going to be looking at six primetime games. Now, whether they think Amazon Friday is a primetime game, if not – you're going to get a – you might get a, a, a seventh game on a weird day. You, you could get a Christmas night game. And I would imagine you're going to get a stock load of, of Fox 425. So, yeah, Jody, the branding – because, look, Pittsburgh's not all that good. They're about a mediocre team. They still are a draw. I don't know what they're going to do with Green Bay with, with love now. The Jets might be a team – that yes. now you get the New York market is Justin Fields. You know, there's a lot of buzz about him. Is that enough to draw the Bears into some, I don't want to say primetime games, but maybe some better slots? Uh, so, yeah, I think the Eagles, to go back to the original point, the branding, it's the whole thing for them. My point about the free agency is <laughs> every time there's a free agent, Vegas does what? The Eagles have the best odds to get that player. No, they don't. They just know Eagle fans are so passionate that they'll bet on it. So yeah. the Eagles branding is there, and they will get a slot of games at it, time. It, again, and we're getting into semantical debates here, but you're using the word branding. I don't think it's branding for the Eagles. I think it's the, the Eagles are really good. I think let's back both. it up. Let's I back it both. up. Well, okay, then I'll ask both of you guys. Carson Wentz gets traded. The Eagles go 4-11-1. Are you telling me, hey, we got to get the Eagles in primetime because they're the Eagles. No. They're no. the well-branded no. Eagles. No, they weren't because the Eagles branding, you know what the Eagles branding is? We went to the Super Bowl last year. We went 14-3 last year. We lost at the last second of the last game last year. That's their branding. They are that good a football team. That's not branding because the Dallas Cowboys can't make that argument, but yet they're still the number one draw. Yeah, That's actual branding. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I guess the part of the branding aspect is is the division, the NFC, because you're going to get Eagles Giants in, a, in on a Monday night football game. Generally, you'll get them, and they're not even if they're not the big as we saw a couple of years ago. The Eagles played the Giants on Monday night. They played Washington in that famous. Sunday, uh, Monday night game where they tanked the game and ended up with Devonta Smith and everybody else because they lost that one game. But that wasn't because you had two great teams. That was because – so I guess more of the, Phil, the, the the NFC East has the branding and Dallas is at the top of that list as a standalone. Yeah. And look, even Dallas has to be somewhat relevant. The thing about Dallas is they're always kind of good. They just never live up to expectations, probably because people overrate them uh, each and every year. But they're not terrible. If you're three and thirteen, even Dallas, when they're one and fifteen, you can go back and check. They weren't clamoring to put them on, uh, you know, uh, primetime uh, situations when you're that bad. But so it's both. Uh, to to your question, Jody, that would be interesting, but, though, John. 
the Cowboys went one in fifteen, but then won multiple Super Bowls after that. Yeah, yeah. If they were a team that was so bad, would the network say, "I don't care, they're two and 12 I'll still put them on," or would they finally say, yeah, "You know what? We don't want a two and twelve if you're that game." Bad. If you're that bad, that'll be interesting. Yeah. If you're that bad, they're but not. John's right. They haven't been that bad. No, no. Yeah. they haven't been championship contender worthy, but they haven't fallen to the dregs. Well, they've been championship contender already. worthy. They've just been disappointing in those yeah. games. But they've always they're on this run where they have they're they're a playoff threat, and and yeah. and that so it's it's both. You you need to be kind of good, and you need to have the the branding aspect of which the Cowboys obviously have. The Eagles, look, everybody knows how passionate Eagles fans are. When they're in when their games are meaningful, they're gonna draw big from a television perspective. And I don't mean like last year when it was, you know, they're 14 and one with Jalen Hurts, and it's clear they're a Super Bowl contender. I mean, if you go back to the year prior and they're just fighting for a playoff berth, those games are relevant. Because Eagles fans are so are so passionate. Well, so I think it's. Yeah, both. You, do you think to, on a national level, John? I think yeah. I think it's. Well, both. let's be honest. Even if not it was as Monday, much, but if I think it was it's Monday Night Football and you put Jacksonville and Tennessee on there, people are still watching it. It might not. It yeah. might be instead of twelve million, you might get eight million. But in today's TV landscape, eight million people is more than anybody watching anything for the whole week combined. All right, yeah. but yeah. they're not comparing that eight million that they do. Uh, in a bad Monday night matchup against CSI. They're comparing it against the good Monday night matchup with two yeah. good teams who do oh, three listen. million more viewers per. It all a couple of years ago, we, we talked about this well, a couple of years ago. Um, those Thursday night games were bad games. They were giving us some bad games. And I think people said, if you're going to give me a bad game just because it's Thursday night, I'm not watching it. So they've tried to beef up these Thursday night games and give you a little bit more. But John's point, too, is there's so much parity that almost any game you get is going to have some implications. Heck, the Eagles had like four wins in week 15 a couple of years ago, and they were still alive <laughs> because the NFC East was so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so because of the parity, you're going to get a lot of late season games that have meaning for at least one of the teams involved in the game. Hey, you know, the, the bears are out, but you know, their longtime rival, the Vikings, they need this game to make, you know, so there's very few games in today's NFL where you have two teams playing that are completely out of the mix. Yeah. And those are the only disaster games, really. When you're late in the season, two games completely out of it, people are going to watch good teams. You know, I remember Pittsburgh, Seattle was the Super Bowl. I said, you know what? This this is not compelling uh, from a traditional standpoint. Um, if the ratings are ever going to take a hit for the Super Bowl, it's going to be Pittsburgh, Seattle. Didn't take a hit. People are going to watch good teams. Um, doesn't matter who they are. Um, now, there's a little bit more oomph when it's Dallas, there's a little bit more oomph when it's Green Bay. I would say Green Bay is number two, by the way. Everybody else, it sort of slides um, with how good they are. You know, Kansas City's great. So now, you know, in the Romeo Cornell years, trust me, nobody wanted to look at Kansas City. Right. Um, same thing with the Eagles. Very, very passionate. Uh, but if you go back to the, you know, really dark days, nobody cared about the Eagles. I, I think it's Dallas, it's Green Bay, and it's kind of everybody else. And everybody else, the the impactful teams are the good teams. So yeah, it kinda... well, it's funny because in football they tried so hard to get a team in L.A. Now they have two teams, but the New York and L.A. are not like these powerful draws like they are you know with the Yankees or maybe the Knicks when they're really good it seems like they are like the Giants don't feel like they are on the same maybe I'm wrong about that but like I don't think the NFL well, is were. no I don't think you're wrong but when they're relevant they're huge 
but they haven't been relevant. They've gone through a really, really bad stretch, and they started to. Even during the around. Super Bowl years, though, when they won those two Super, they were nine and seven the one year they won the Super Bowl. So it's not like, hey, we have to have this team on television. And oh, by the way, the Jets have been irrelevant yeah. for my lifetime. Yeah. So that kind of <laughs> sucks. Uh, but that's a whole nother story. Um, I, I got a question, non schedule related, and I'm going to ask you both. Although I don't really think John has to answer because I can predict what his hashtag will be, what his answer will be. Hashtag no. Um, Mike Gill, should Howie Roseman be attempting to sign the punt god today? I mean, this is a one where they would do a lot of due diligence, I'm imagining. Um, if he's completely cleared, and the, this is one of those things, you know. You go back to Michael Vick when the Eagles signed him. People went up in arms. I'm never going to buy tickets again. <laughs> and people bought tickets again. He was penalized for something. He served his penalty. If the league is saying you are welcomed back into our league, then sure. I mean, this is a situation where they need that position. The league is saying he's eligible to play. Then you deal with the the, the press afterwards, um, if there is any press. I mean, the guy was completely absolved. He was, apparently wasn't even there, This which opens up a whole nother uh, can of problems that, that we've got. But, yeah, any of these things, look, you as a fan can judge for yourself whether you want to support the team because of that player. The Mike Vick thing, I think, was a clear thing that if fans will support – they might say they'll never buy a ticket again. You know how many people I heard that said they would never watch the Eagles again? Well, here they are watching the Eagles and probably were the first people in line to buy Super Bowl tickets. So you deal with the 48 hours of negativity if you get it, and then you move on. That's how you run your business. I mean, that's a business decision if you want to get into it. So they need that position. If they feel that's the right fit and the league is saying this man is now eligible to return to our league, you have to consider it. Yeah, um, I think the Eagles might consider it down the road. He's still got a civil lawsuit he's dealing with. I, yeah. I don't think they want any parts of that situation. Because remember, when people say, and I think it was Dan Wetzel, so I'll give Dan credit. Dan got the uh, transcript. Uh, it's about 200 pages. It's like a book of, of you know, essentially uh, the DA um, – you know, declining to to um, press charges. Um, and there's a lot of exculpatory evidence in there. Um, did have sex with the girl um, before he left the party. Um, that's in the transcript. Um, so there's going to be this he said, she said thing in uh, the civil suit. And I don't think until that's cleared up. Now, when, when that's cleared up, I think, you know, if they still need a punter, I think maybe it's in play and they'll do their, and Jeffrey Lurie's proven, I say all of the time, right? he has proven he will give people second chances. But until that civil lawsuit, because when, it, when, when a DA, a lot of people say he's been completely cleared. They, they declined to prosecute because they don't think they could win the case. That is not saying you're innocent. Their, their investigation is that once the alleged part uh, uh, of, of the rape occurred, he had left the party. And, and from their standpoint and their investigation, um, they said, hey, look, we can't, we can't win this case. We can't, and we're not going to prosecute this so, case. But l- it's still... Let me, let me get your stance on this, John. You're saying the NFL slash Roger Goodell should be more judgmental than a district attorney? No, they... I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm talking about the Eagles. I'm saying I, I don't think the Eagles, I, as far as what Roger Goodell does, I mean, again, the problem with the NFL is there's no precedent to what they do. Sometimes they keep people on the commissioner's exempt list. Sometimes they don't. It usually has to do, to be honest, with the level of public scrutiny. To be, you know, it usually has to do with that. They're trying to um, keep the wolves at bay, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So I can't speak to what Roger Goodell is going to do. My my perception of the Eagles is, as long as that civil lawsuit is out there, they probably don't want to touch it because more could come out in that particular lawsuit. Remember, civil lawsuits are not criminal, 
there's not it, it's not uh, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. It's 51 percent, 51 versus 49. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier. And you could have a lot of mud thrown and right. it become worse from a public relations perspective. That's what I'm talking about. That's well, and that's why I said the Eagles probably having to do a whole heck of a lot more digging than just what we know now. They're probably going to have to ask a lot more because of that possibility. Hey, look, if it were me, I'd probably say, I don't want any part of this. You know, let somebody and else. That's deal where with I that. think they'll end yeah. up. That's, but that's my guess. Pure speculation. But. Big Dom is supposedly the best security guy in the, the entire National Football League. If you're going to depend on a guy that you have on your payroll that you think is great at what he does, wouldn't you send the bloodhound to this well, Big remember, Dom out and, to find out I, what's going I hate, on? Because these are much bigger issues, but also realize it's a punter. You know, it's not a quarterback. It's not a, a, a How'd, a how'd that zip his butt in the Super Bowl go, John? I get it, but it's still a punter. It's still a punter. And that, not that wound is still fresh, John. At some point, I think Eagle fans could get back to, yeah, but it's just a punter. Not, not today. Not as long as we can see that punt being returned inside the red zone. It will the be, Super Bowl. It little, will be interesting. A little bit more painful. It will be it, interesting, though, to see, you know, I, I, now he's still, is he suspended from the league or did the Bills just release him? The Bills just released him. him. So yeah, he's I eligible. I don't, I, I don't think he's not a part. I, to, I don't know, Jody, if you remember. I don't think he's on the exempt list. I don't think anything. Right. They just released there, was, him. there was reporting at the time that the NFL was about to take action against him and potentially suspend him and alike, and the Bills beat him to it and released him yeah. at a time. So he's so not even a part of the league. So from their standpoint, they don't have to do anything, uh, which is what they like, <laughs> to be honest. Right. So if um, some team tried to sign yeah. him, then they they'd would have to. Do so. Yeah. 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 They'd at least have to make a statement. They, if they don't feel that uh, any punishment is warranted, then he could just sign with whatever team. Um, I just want to see the the kid was so good in college. I don't know you. I have you. If you 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 read excerpts from the Wetzel column, right, John? You didn't read the whole two hundred pages, did you? Because no, I sure I, hell didn't. No, I. But his his. Uh... His his piece is very detailed. It explains the entire situation. And as he describes it, and I'll read it exactly, prosecutors in San Diego have now detailed their doubts about their allegations, about those allegations, and why a raise and others won't be charged. So they have they can't win the case. They know they can't win the case. They have doubts. They're not going to prosecute the case. Now you you see it all over. And again. From a legal standpoint, people say, oh, he's innocent. He's been clear. That's not what that means. That means they can't win the case. They, right. they don't have enough evidence to win the case. There's si still a civil lawsuit out there where you don't have to, again, prove beyond a reasonable doubt, which is much more difficult than winning a civil lawsuit. The, 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 um, the girl and, and her lawyer claim they're going to keep moving forward. There's going to be a lot of mud slinging back and forth. I just don't think the Eagles want to be a part of that. Right. Which again, goes back to what we said before the Eagles do their due diligence. I would imagine they say, this is just not worth it for us. And it'd be interesting to see if any NFL team does. Cause yeah, I'll give you my yeah. stance right here right now. If I think the guy can help me, I'm going to sign him. If the Wetzel reporting is on point, whether there is an ongoing civil suit or not, if I think that the kid can help me win football games, I want him on my team because there is enough evidence here in my estimation to say these were un, uh, 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 just allegations and that's all there is to it. If you get your guy and we know who he is with the Eagles, big Dom to do his due diligence and they come up and said, yeah, I, the, the prosecutors are right. They can't win this case. Don't know about a civil lawsuit, but yeah, I think the guy can help us win football games. If I were the Eagles or any other football team. By I the way, a breaking, Merry Christmas, week 16, 430, New York Giants versus Philadelphia Eagles. Christmas, hey, I they're one, playing. I got one Christmas. right. Christmas, Merry Christmas. Yeah. So the Christmas Eagles and Giants. Not Which yesterday, um, well, that means Peter King had speculated no Black that Friday. Yeah. Giants could be the Black Friday game. 
That doesn't mean the Eagles still won't be the Black Friday game. It just appears it yes. won't be against it. Although that would be a month apart. I mean, yeah. you got the day after. I Thanksgiving. don't think they do two Giants games, but you never know. I mean, I don't think they do two well, Giants games. And Here's I said the one yesterday. thing, and we kind of touched on this, and Mike, we've kept you a long time. Promise to let you go in just a couple minutes. Here's one thing I don't know, and I think Mike, you talked about the inner negotiations of the teams and the meetings with the guys, whatever else. You know who seems to be getting the short end of this stick? CBS and Fox. And I get it. They don't have these defined roles of CBS is AFC and Fox is NFC, but they still write the biggest check because they do the most games. More well, they than NBC, respect. which has one game. They Amazon, which has one game. Disney, which has one game. CBS and Fox buy a whole weekend's worth of programming. And it seems to me with everything going this way, that way, and the other game, they're getting screwed on Sundays. Well, the, the they package that they paid for isn't worth what it was once was. They do get to protect games. Like if somebody wants to take one from them, they can say, no, we're not giving you that game. And they get contractual obligations to the teams that they won for X amount. Like they can say, we want these five Cowboy games. You can't take them from us. So I think they still do have that power to some the 425 Sunday game is the biggest time slot of the week. So that is technically the prime time game. 425 Sunday has the biggest audience. So that is the big game. It's just not a standalone game. And that's why they like to get these games when there's only one game on at a time. But, you know, I think Fox and CBS, well, ESPN is writing a massive th 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 check for that Monday night game. And they're getting the short out of the stick because they've been getting lousy. Now, the games are getting better as they've upgraded their broadcast team. So we'll see how that factors in to the schedule when it comes out. Are we going to see a better Monday night slate now in year number two of the Buck Aikman? If they got, if, if CBS and, and Fox can protect the games to the extent you're saying, which I think you're overstating, Mike, what the hell are you flexing to? If NBC is going to flex and ESPN is going to flex and Fox and CBS and put the blocks on so many games, what game are you going to? What's the major upgrade that you're going to? Uh, oh, again, it, 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 and this is where we were talking about before. All these games have some sort of meaning in them, generally. There's very few games where the two teams are completely out of it. So I we didn't see a lot of flexing last no. year. Yeah, you know? it, it is. It, you, you, I think it gets more overblown than the actuality. I don't. You don't see a ton of it, and I think you're right because parity is a big part of it, and you know the legal say, hey, these teams are relevant. You know, I think when up. they flex, it's <laughs> a lot of times when they flex, it's when they think a lower, a smaller market team was going to be good, and then they end up not being good. And it's like, hey, I don't need Cleveland, Tennessee. I thought Cleveland was going to be good. They ended up not being good. So let me get somebody different. I don't think they're, you know, if you have a mediocre Jets team because what for playing Denver, I don't think they're trying to get rid of them because you got the Jets in there. Yeah. At I mean, Mike Gill's show Zach on Wilson's Twitter. Zach playing quarterback instead of Aaron Rodgers. Oh, then, then might, Rodgers is, oh they'll be flexing out of that in a hurry. By I the way, I, I, I didn't ask about your T-shirt today. Is that Yale? Are we going Ivy League? Yeah, we got Yale. Uh, I've been yeah. to New Haven multiple times. Yeah. Fantastic pizza. Beautiful That's campus. Yeah. I've been to the campus twice, and I've been to um, the pizza on whatever street that is in New Haven. What, yeah, what's the name of that brick oven? They're phenomenal. Uh, they got I mean, Sally's of Pizza is up there. Frank Pepe's is where I've been multiple Pepe. times. Okay. Um, bar is up there. They've got, if you're a pizza fan, you got to go to New Haven. I've been there a couple times and I stopped and got my Yale shirt yeah. when I took and people think you're a smart show. guy now at Mike Gill's show. I, ESPN I, I, people South now. Jersey. Believe it or not, you know, I do these beer reviews, okay? So people have been saying, oh, I, I watch your beer reviews all the time, you know? I'm very well known down here for my taste in IPAs. But my number two thing is, what T-shirt did you wear on the Birds 365 show this Yes. Week? All right. We we got to get the number one, uh, like the Sports Bash afternoons in uh, South Jersey, two to six. Uh, listen to Mike there. Go talk about the Sixers this afternoon, something more relevant than schedules but uh hey the nfl's the king yeah big sixers win shocked by me big sixers win on the road against a team that 
I thought well, it was better. I'll Early bring my I'll now bring my I'll bring my Negadelphia into it. Okay, I'll ask you, gentlemen. The Sixers won last night, so now the scenario is this: to win this series, they would either have to a beat Boston three times in a row, or if they lose on Thursday to win the series, they would have to three win times on the road in Boston three times. Now they got to win Game Six. They're not winning a Game Seven. So All right. this is well, then they beat Boston three times in a row. Something that was unthinkable at the beginning of this series. But maybe it is one of those years where the unthinkable is happening. Uh, Mike, go flex on the sports bash this afternoon. See, we'll see you guys there flexing. Get it? Uh, even though he had the Yale shirt on, I'm thinking that went right over his. Head. A smart guy. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to proclaim, you know. People, you wear that layer. Oh, he went to Yale. It really, it's just as easy as putting on a t shirt. I'm a main guy in case one. Yeah. I got a main shirt on today. You don't have to be all that smart to go. I got a Harvard uh, sweatshirt. I stayed in Harvard. By the way, it was on the NBA Finals, uh, Boston, Los Angeles. They put us up in uh, uh, right near Harvard. That's beautiful there. Beautiful. Very nice. And John tried to fake it like Gil tried to fake it, that he belonged. And Nobody bought just, it, Jody. People Nobody just put their it. heads down and uh, sh shook their heads. Uh, McMullen and McDonald, we're coming back. Coming up next hour. Remember, we told you all week we're going to try and take a little deep dive in on the opponents on the Eagles' schedule this week. Yesterday, we had Paul Schwartz from the New York Post to talk about Big Blues offseason today. We're headed down to the nation's capital to talk commanders with us, Grant Paulson. From one oh, what the hell is this station again? One oh six seven, the fan down in D.C. GP Grant Paulson joining us.